Welcome, everyone, to the .NET Maui podcast. We're here to keep you up to date with the latest and greatest in .NET client development. We'll talk about some Azure, some Visual Studio, some Blazor, and, of course, .NET Maui. I'm Matt Sokup. I'm James Montemagno. And I'm David Ortnow. Whoa, Microsoft <laughs> Build is, like, here, basically. It's happening. It is. It's. Uh, I was getting alerted about doing some recordings next week and thinking, wow, that's... <laughs> That's next week. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening. Yes. Uh, I will got to say this. I, I'll be there. Yeah. Uh, I will also be there. Actually, I think uh, all of the Maui product management team will be there and some of our engineers will be there too. Well, How about you, Matt? I will definitely be there. And actually, David, we have to talk because I have jobs for you. Many, you many do. jobs. I will put you to work. Are they, are they are they in and around booths or tables? Yes. Or, yep. Yeah. All right. And yeah. what's surprising is the .NET Maui product team has already signed up for them, but I didn't see any David there yet. <laughs> Putting you on the spot. <laughs> it probably was in an email. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And uh, and so caught up in the tide, if you will. Yep. Yeah. No. Very much looking forward to being at Build and seeing more people in person and having conversations. And you know, yeah. it'd be fun is I'll be there. There's going to be a podcast booth and a bunch of podcasters mm -hmm. are going to be coming in, doing interviews. They've kind of done this before my past Microsoft builds and mm -hmm. I'm helping some folks run that area, which is pretty kind of makes sense because I do a lot of podcasting in general. And this podcast, I wonder if we get the three of us together to podcast this podcast in the podcast booth at Microsoft's build podcast center. That'd Absolutely. We should yeah. definitely do that. And we could even maybe grab a special guest or something. I don't know. Well, that'd be that'd cool. Be great. Yeah, that'd be cool. Get the whole crew, the whole Maui crew together. I mean, it hasn't happened in a long time. I haven't seen anybody. So are we uh, are we setting it up like in the past where it's a uh, plexiglass and people can kind of come look, look at you in the fishbowl? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it's really nice. It's a really nice booth. I'm pretty impressed. It's the nicest podcasting booth I've probably ever been in. Seeing that. Well, I don't know. My the house is really nice, so I don't know. this is a nice house. So, yeah, it's, it's all plexiglass. But what we're working with the the studios team, where Matt and I have recorded before in person with the road tribe get crazy mm -hmm. road podcaster. I'm just taking their equipment. I'm gonna I'm set it up, which is pretty <laughs> nice. So I'm gonna be doing that. I'm gonna be in the expert zone. I, I don't even I don't I don't even have to talk at this build. That's kind of cool. I'm just gonna let y'all do the talking. I'm not on the product team. I don't, I don't, I don't make the product. Why am I talking about it? I just, I just make videos on the weekend. So I pretend like I'm part of the team. <laughs> we have a ton of, we have a ton of Maui sessions and demos and stuff. So I could totally hand one off to you if you're really looking for, no. Okay. <laughs> you're good. Uh, go to build.microsoft.com. We just put out a great blog post on the dev blog talking about all the great .NET -y stuff that's over there. Mm -hmm. So definitely check that out. When you go to sessions, you can explore sessions and you can do refine results and you can go to topics and you can go to .NET. There's a whole .NET section. And guess what? David and Maddie's face comes up first. The first mm -hmm. one. Because it starts Most with an important. A. Yep. Yeah, well, alphabetical. So... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I actually don't know if it's alphabetical. It, oh, I think it's alphabetical by day, maybe. So all things client and mobile app dev. What are you guys going to be covering there? That's going to be digital and in person. You don't even have to pay to see this thing. You can register for free on the website, build.microsoft.com. David, what are yeah, you guys, guys going to be talking this about? Hybrid. We're getting pretty good at the hybrid thing, you know, uh, doing the in-person and field and the online stuff and everything. Hopefully everybody uh, finds it valuable. I certainly like it more than just being virtual. But uh, yeah, we'll give the whole roadmap spiel. We've got a couple of uh, secrets to uh, unveil, um, but uh, for the most part, it's going to, yeah, reintroduce oh. everybody to Maui. But um, I guess you have to show up to find out, and I have to prepare the slides for me to find out. <laughs> well, it'll be good, too, because, you know, a lot of times, like MVP Summit just happened, a lot of times that MVP Summit is sort of like a sneak peek at some of the stuff at Bill, but I watched y'all's session and i was like you can't do that at build like it was it was so the cool part about mvp summit is it can be really personal and like yeah people won't know unless you're an mvp but like you're you know david when you get him talking he just he keeps talking but he's like it's really personal he like really is like invested in the folks right so i'm mm -hmm. I, you know I'm, I'm excited to see how the the build session turns out so maddie's the only one that can keep you on track so 
Pretty much, which is why we're always uh, we're always paired up together. Yeah, yeah, no, I love it. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely have some uh, cool customer stories also to share, which is probably the thing I'm most excited about. Is kind of uh, you know we get asked quite often who's using this, what are they building with it, etc. And so we'll have some first party stuff from Microsoft Teams as well as uh, some third parties that are. Great looking apps, good looking stuff, and they run their businesses on it. So that's awesome. That's awesome. That's fantastic. And you know what I've been running recently is preview versions of .NET 8. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah. Transition. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so preview three uh, shipped a few weeks ago. Preview four is impending. It's it's coming very, very soon. So with preview three, we did our first Maui blog to kind of bring everybody's focus to it. But we've been there since preview one. And that's very exciting because uh, from six to seven and now preview or now .NET 8, uh, Maui is on track with the rest of .NET on the same schedule, shipping on the same cadence. So we have caught up. We are fully on the same schedule now. So that's awesome. The, uh, the, the cool things in .NET 8, firstly, is the reintroduction of NuGet packages. And so the flexibility this allows is while you still install everything through the workload mechanism, uh, either through .NET CLI or through Visual Studio, um, you now have the ability to uh, add a MAUI version to your project to specify exactly what version you want to be using. Mm. Um, so a, a lot of requests that we've heard uh, since we released is, you know, I want to know exactly which version I'm on and I want to be able to have one project on one version and have another project on a slightly different version. And I want to be able to download packages and do that in the NuGet way. So excited to be able to bring that back. Um, some other things, really the, the main uh, uh, highlight of the whole release for us is quality. Um, more than uh, 250 or so uh, bug fixes have already gone into this release and many more coming in each preview from here on out. Um, then on top of that, we have a few desktop related things, uh, keyboard listeners, uh, keyboard accelerators. Accelerators are those special shortcuts to get to menus. Um, and then uh, some deep linking as related to Blazor Hybrid. Deep linking being, you know, you can click a link in an email or a push notification and go directly to that feature of the app. Hmm. Um, so those are the main features there, but we also, because we're part of one.net, we have done this unification. We get to benefit from some really cool work happening in the, uh, base class library team in the runtime team, et cetera. And so some of those things are native AOT. Um, this is probably going to still be classified as a preview feature at the time that we GA, at least for the mobile platforms. Um, but this is a, a rewritten, highly optimized AOT, ahead of time compilation is what that stands for, um, which will make your apps run faster and we will reduce your app size um, in general for AOT. AOT typically bloats the app size a bit because of the way it's doing what it does. Um, but <clears throat> balancing the act between performance and app size is really the key. And then the other thing is native libraries. Native libraries, I remember, James, when you and I did a little demo with the Embedinator 4000 back in the day. That's correct. Where, gosh, what was the open source uh, Swift app or maybe it was Objective-C? Uh, we It was a Kickstarter app, Kickstarter, I think. Kickstarter, that's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And we brought some Xamarin Forms and .NET UI into the native Kickstarter open source yeah. app. Yeah. And it was cool. It worked. It was like, oh, we brought .NET into the Swift world. Um so native libraries is similar to that. It's really geared more towards non-UI, but it allows you to essentially take your .NET libraries and package them up as native frameworks or whatever the native thing is for the platform that you're running it on. We're targeting Android and iOS. Um, and so, yeah, you can, you can bring that right into your Objective-C, Swift, Java, Kotlin uh, applications. That's cool. That's a big, yeah. uh, big request, big feature from many of folks. That is for sure. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and since Embedinator was an experiment, but never a fully supported thing, people have been asking for it to be a real, a real boy, if you will. And so it's exciting that it's part of the part of .NET in .NET 8. 
Was that a Pinocchio reference that you just did? It was a Pinocchio yeah. reference. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank You're you. You're welcome. <laughs> so I had to double check myself. So <laughs> I don't know why it was on my mind, but uh, there you go. Um, a couple of other cool things I wanted to call out uh, that are recent newsworthy things for Maui. Um, those who have Xamarin and Xamarin Forms uh, projects, you need to be upgrading them to .NET. And so to help you along that way, we have the .NET Upgrade Assistant. Um, you may have used the command line version in the past. It is now also available as a Visual Studio for Windows extension. Um, and what's cool about this is that uh, you can actually migrate or upgrade project by project. You just install the extension, right click your project and say upgrade. And it will give you the option to do an in place or a uh, backed up uh, upgrade. So you have a couple of different modes and mm -hmm. then you can choose file by file what, what it is within the project that you want to upgrade. Um, it's going to do your uh, your CS proj upgrade to SDK style, and then it's also going to do some namespace using import uh, updates. Uh, it will look at your NuGet packages and, and see what it can do about those when, when it has a replacement. Um, and then we're adding in, over time, more and more refactorings uh, to help you bring your code to .NET 6 Plus for uh, Android, iOS, and soon uh, UWP uh, as well. Um, so the, the extension is being uh, revved pretty quickly. So if you want to get the very latest and the one that works the best for Xamarin to Maui, you'll want to use the 17.6 previews, um, or maybe by the time you're listening to this, 17.6 is the stable release. But that's the version that you're going to get the best XAML support, for example. Nice. Um, and if you're on Mac, which many of our developers are, you may be wondering, okay, that's great. You told me about this extension for Windows. What about me? Doesn't anyone care? I've had an... Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Breaking out in a song. Do you remember that song from like the 90s? No. I don't think so. One yet. All right. So... Uh, we actually, the, the NuGet package that you can install, the .NET tool for Upgrade Assistant for the command line, now runs on the Mac. So thank you to uh, Jeffrey Steadfast from our team. He got that working, um, and I have used that myself. So cool. it, it also works well. The Visual Studio extension does have more features. Those features will be coming back to the CLI. It's kind of a circular, you know, uh, I don't know, life cycle there. Um, but that, that's a good option for you on, on Mac as well. And then, of course, we have the upgrade documentation, of course, and the official learn.microsoft.com that you should always reference to give you some additional tips and tricks. But excited to have these things all coming together. Um, I myself have been going into the old Xamarin Forms samples repository and grabbing project by project and migrating them or upgrading them and uh, ha having good success with it. So... That's awesome. There you go. I, I did a live stream where I went through the, some of the early versions of it. I need to go through mm -hmm. and use this new new tool I'm upgrading in Visual Studio right now. I only run preview. That's how I live my <laughs> yeah. life. It's, uh, it's, pre it's preview or bust. So I don't have any other version installed. I refuse. So um, I say that's that's how I want all. I want I want the latest, but not latest latest because like we have you know, internal, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. bits. Oh, that's, that's too risque for me. So I'm like, I'm, I'll do preview, which stuff does break because it's preview, but that, that's not me for not having both of them, but it's there. Talking about .NET 8, um, I've been also checking out C Sharp 12 as well. I you know the cool part about .NET Maui being integrated with all the bits and pieces as things are happening, you get new versions of C Sharp right away. Mm -hmm. Boom. So yeah, C Sharp um, 12 is pretty cool. My favorite thing, you know, I want to go too, too big into it. Frank and I did a merge comp flicked podcast all about C-Sharp 12, but primary constructors for non-record classes and structs. Oof, they're great. I'm really excited. It's going to really minimize code. I'm excited. The .NET podcast application, we've really been like upgrading that along the way. And I'm kind of ready. The next route is for me to, to do a branch for a .NET 8 rev of that, which would be really cool. So we got a lot of stuff. You're going to see that app all over built. It's pretty exciting. That app just keeps, keeps, keeps kicking. It just keeps, great app. keeps going. It's yeah. a great app. So all sorts of good stuff. So it's there. And you talked about it. A whole bunch of new releases for VS uh, 17.6. 
Um, and 17.5 is out. I want to mention two things, and then I know Matt might have some more things to do, but uh, only because I shamelessly self-promote myself. But I think for Don and Maui developers, this shameless plug is right up your alley. Um, because if you are building mobile and desktop apps, you probably have a back end as well that those APIs are talking about, to, talking to. Um, and they're talking about them just you know by themselves. Just the, <laughs> Your apps are just snickering about those APIs. With their ah, friends. Yeah. With their friends, yeah. Now, here's what's fascinating. The biggest, one of the biggest aggravating things about mobile development, so it really has nothing to do with .NET, but it's more about just deploying to a device or a simulator and emulator is that you want to run your APIs locally. Like you have a ASP.NET Core web API and you want to run it locally and you want to hit it. You want to hit that endpoint. Like on Windows, it's okay because you can talk to local hosts and same with Mac. Once you get into the deploy to an Android emulator or to an iOS device, there's certs. Is it HTTP, HTTPS? You got to disable stuff, all this stuff. And you don't have to worry about it anymore. Dev tunnels. It's all about mm -hmm. dev tunnels. It's like my favorite new feature. There's a whole like SDK or something out there for it as well. Dev tunnels, what it does, it lets you tunnel a port basically to your machine and expose a public URL at devtunnels.ms or whatever. And what that will enable you to do, and there's a bunch of services that have been out there that some are free, some are paid, all this stuff, but it's integrated into Visual Studio. So that's why this is important. When I go to my API, I say, create a new dev tunnel. You can do this for an Azure function. You can do it for a web API. You can do it for anything. And you say, create a new uh, dev tunnel. And it can be public. It can be behind a login. It can be you know different authentication mechanisms. And you can have it sticky. So you can say, next time I open this API, make it the same URL. So what that means, so when you hit debug, it's still running on local host, but you get a public URL as if you had deployed it to the internet. So I could give that to Matt. I could give that to David. He could like look at the swagger definition, all the stuff, or I could just put it in my mobile app, right? So I could say, if debug, just use my dev tunnel. If release, use my public API because I've deployed this out to an app service. So a lot of times we see developers, they struggle and they deploy their entire back and do all this stuff. But with dev tunnels, boom, it's all right there, which is really, really cool. So I do this cool demo on stage where I'm debugging this monkey API in the monkey finder app from the Don and Maui workshop. And I'm like, oh, look, Android emulators. They can't talk to local hosts. HTTPS, oh, it's a bummer town. But I'm like, oh, let me enable a dev tunnel. Boom. And then I use hot reload in real time to swap out the URL. And then the Android app starts working. That's a cool demo. I'm that just saying nice. it's, it's really neat. And then additionally, <laughs> uh, Visual Studio on Windows also just got something called .http and .rest files. This is really cool too. Um, anybody can use this in any project. You just create a new file and do it with .http and then you can just make RESTful service calls from it to anything. So if you want to test APIs or maybe like how often are you, <laughs> I do this all the time. I'm like, oh, I need to test stuff. So I create a console app or I just like create another button in my application to like call an endpoint. No, you don't have to do that anymore. You can just like call, you can just use the .http file and then you can call it inside of Visual Studio. So kind of again, in, you know, this integrated development experience environment thing, you know, the IDE, it has all this stuff in one. So those are cool new features. And that was DevTunnels was introduced in 17.5 and G8. And I think, uh, HTTPs are also in there as well, the file at least. They might be in the preview, whatever it is. I did a video on it on my YouTubes. I, love, I just think it's like the coolest thing ever. So, boom. Yeah, I love nice. the dev tunnels. Before you had to do the ngrok. Yeah. Or ngrok was one of them. That was the one I always use. And it was just, uh, it worked. It was great, but it wasn't integrated. And that's yeah. the big deal. Stay all in one spot. That's so nice. David, you were going to say something. I, I, I jumped I, over I was going to say, I feel like I need to take like, you know, two weeks off and just go learn all these things because things are just moving so quickly. And like, I know my little space, you know, and my, my domain, but, uh, then there's all these other things that I could be taking advantage of. Like, you know, some, some folks on our team have been, uh, using chat GPT, open AI, whatever the stuff is and, uh, having it build Maui apps and having it refactor XAML files and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, what? Yeah. How do I, how do I even do this? Somebody I have to, tell me. I have to learn cool Maui things from Gerald. Yes. Cause right? it's just like, I don't even know what's happening half the time. I mean, Gerald mm. and I talk about, we talk about Maui stuff all the time, but like, he's just like, it's all over the place. He's just like, bump, pump, 
I, I, I just I'm learning so much stuff, right? The and then from Frank, I got to learn about AI because I don't have no idea what's going on. So, and then Visual Studio, just luckily, I, I sometimes just read the release blogs. I'm like, oh, cool, that's a cool feature. <laughs> right. So, so you mentioned Gerald, and that triggered me because. Uh, I just got a message from him uh, that he has confirmed what we found out that uh, the uh, Xamarin UI test and the UI test agent for iOS with App Center is working. Oh, cool. So they shipped a release and somebody tried it. We didn't even know it happened, really. Uh, <laughs> and lo and behold, it's working for Maui. So this is very exciting because many customers I've talked to said, hey, we've got a bunch of UI tests with our Xamarin project. We're not going to migrate, uh, upgrade to Maui until we know we can run them. And now you can for both wow. Android and iOS. So that's very exciting. That's and neat. Gerald yeah. confirmed it, so I believe it. I'm looking at it. It says .NET 6 Xamarin UI test. Well, yeah, I don't even know when that happened. Isn't that wild? Just people are people are building and shipping stuff all the time. See, I need to take a couple of weeks off just to you know <laughs> catch up on all these things. You know, well, I think I just I there's I was also looking too because you know you obviously use like GitHub Actions and Azure DevOps yep. a lot for a bunch of CI, but there's like was it Code Magic? I think that's the one. There's another. So I think yeah, you sent me that link, and I still don't know what it is. <laughs> there there is it? C- it's magic. <laughs> it's magic. It's Code Magic. Uh, Code Magic does a bunch of stuff, but I never saw the Maui logo on there. But when you go to documentation, there's a big .NET Maui. So it's like all these quick stars, they support a bunch of stuff, right? And like BitRise also is another thing. It's about the ecosystem, right? We don't. Mm-hmm. It's great to have great first party things, but it's great when there's an ecosystem of stuff too. But yeah, like I pulled down their, um, their repo and like they, yeah, they, can, they can do .NET Maui stuff. And then I did a pull request um, to, the, to their sample repo because... Um, workloads are a little confusing. In fact, I was on a, a thread, uh, with some MVPs and I wonder if they pulled it in. Oh, they did pull it in. Well, cool. Um, did they, did they thumb up, thumbs up? It just pulled it in blindly. Oh, looks, I got a LGTM. That's great. <laughs> Let's get in me. Ship it. Oh, I got three thumbs up. Wow. Um, so what ends up happening, I was reading their, their, their .NET install script for the CI. So this is actually something that's really fascinating. We're totally off tangent here, but imagine you're in any CI service. It doesn't matter. You need to install .NET and have .NET. Maybe it's already installed, but then you need to install the Maui workload. So it was a great, I was talking to, no, it wasn't Sam. It was Lance. I was talking mm-hmm. to Lance um, in an email thread and he was trying to figure out how do I speed up my CI build? And he was just doing .NET install Maui, which is normally what I do. And he's like, well, what about Maui mobile and Maui desktop? Mm-hmm. And I said, well, let me find you. Let me let me go and let me go into the .NET Maui repo. Let me find the manifest file where all this is there. So really, there are there's a mega workload, right, right which is Maui. But there are actually just five workloads. I mean, there's more than that, actually. There's like Maui Android, and Maui Android includes Android. There's Maui iOS, which includes iOS. <clears throat> Maui, Ca- Maui Mac Catalyst, Maui Windows. So when you install Maui, it will include Maui Mobile, Maui Desktop, which includes Android, iOS, Tizen, Mac Atlas, Windows mm-hmm. for Maui, and the underlying stuff, right? Most of these installs are pretty quick, but if you're like shaving seconds, you know, over and over again, it's good. So I said, well, what you should do is just do install, you know, done it, done it, install Maui Android. You mm-hmm. only need to install one thing. You don't need anything else if you're just building an Android app. Mm-hmm. If you want to do iOS, Maui iOS. So I was looking at Code Magic's sample, and they were doing, they were doing, .NET install iOS space Maui, and I was like, mm, that, that's just that doesn't even make any sense because Maui includes Maui iOS, which includes iOS. It's great. So, anyways, I fixed their I fixed their samples, which is great. Uh, but if you're like, oh wow. Why do I got to install all this stuff? Well, you don't actually have to in CI, right? What I like to do is I like to build my Android app separate from my iOS app, run them in parallel, you know, don't wait, run them in parallel, but then, you know, you could have two different scripts in there. Or if you're running them in the same CI, just do, you can do down at install Maui iOS, Maui Android, right? That's probably Mm -hmm. what you would do. But anyways, fun fact. 
Yeah, no, it's it's one of the one of the benefits of workloads uh, is that the manifests are extremely flexible. So yeah, we have recipes essentially or manifests for all the different combinations that you can optimize your install from, and you can find them all on uh, nougat.org. Oh yeah, nougat.org. Yeah, I figured out how to do markdown. Did mm -hmm. thirty. Six years of my life, I never know how to do this. Did you know that you can do multi-level bullet points in Markdown? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's very complicated. You have to like index and there's like pluses and minuses. I just thought it didn't exist, but it did. Anyways, that's fine. It's not, it's not easy. Usually you, just, you can't just tab. I usually just tab and it does multi-level. Does it? Are you using some plus thing? No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just inside it. Oh, hold on. Let me see. Oh, no way. To Matt, own. do you just tab? I just, I tab. just tab. No, if I'm I'm inside like the GitHub pull request thing. Oh, uh, maybe well, it's maybe a GitHub because GitHub kind of does their own little parsing with additional mm. features. Yeah, it's interesting though. If I, yeah, it, it's because it's in the browser. So I want to try that in yeah. a normal Markdown file. Yeah, tabbing uh, in a text field in a browser. Uh, generally doesn't work, but sometimes yeah. it does. Sometimes it surprisingly does. Yeah. You guys want to get to some news? News. Do it. News. I got two news articles and then uh, we got a bunch of other stuff. So a few things. I've been trying to feature um, some videos and some blogs all about features built into down at Maui. Uh, the one I just did, because I use this personally, is drawing elements on maps. This is kind of cool. If you come from Xamarin Forms, there was a map control, but it's pretty limited. Uh, in general, just like pins. That's pretty much it. Uh, and there were a bunch of third party controls that were out there, especially one of my favorite third party libraries that works with Maui and works with Xamarin is um, Mapsui, which is a great library. I use it in one of my personal apps as well. That was uh, Xamarin Forms app. And for Don and Maui, you actually have basically the, all the capabilities that you could imagine for drawing shapes and lines and things on a map. So I did this blog post, I also did a video. Uh, on drawing elements on a map. So you can do polylines, you can do circles, um, you can have them fill, you can have them not fill, you can obviously put pins on there. Um, and in the in the, in the the blog, um, I outline how to do this easily enough um, and kind of how to, 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 to put down the different elements, which is just, you know, just, I just regurgitated documentation. But I should kind of show you how to, here's like a campus map or whatever with locations and whatnot. And the samples are amazing in the documentation. But someone was asking me, oh, can I um, use SVGs for the pins? And I said, well, not out of the box, but you could if you write a little bit of code because um, Vlad, Vladislav, uh, wrote a great uh, blog post about customizing map pins in .NET Maui where he uses an SVG. So boom, you can do it. It's magic. Uh, he's got all sorts of great blogs. So that's in the comments. You can look below there. Um, so that's one. And then what else did I uh, do? Oh, we had a whole .NET Azure day. This is really, really cool. Not only did Matt put out an awesome beginner series, but we actually did an entire live stream event on the Azure developers YouTube for .NET developers. So from start to finish, you know, all sorts of things that you can imagine, not just... Um, um, basics, but beyond basics, like diagnosing problems, like when you should, you know, pick like Azure container apps versus AKS, like, you know, all sorts of deep divey stuff. Hanselman did a cool keynote type session where he just talked about developer productivity tools, um, load testing, all sorts of good stuff. So obviously if you're building backends and you're building websites and other things like that alongside your Maui apps, definitely take a look at that. That's what, that's what I got. Oh, I also do have a bunch of other videos. So I do want to do a shout out really quick. To the documentation team and they have a great what's new section and in the most recent update we should probably highlight this uh every month but at least in the march and nowhere in april they haven't come up with the april the page yet but there's all sorts of new stuff like android manifest file manipulation um building ios apps with a cli um they had a just a megaton of mac catalyst stuff for publishing, for specifying idioms, entitlements, all sorts of stuff on migration. Um, so now there's a great doc. Um, I, held, I worked with the, um, uh, the team over there on, we did a blog post on the Xamarin essentials and type of migration stuff. And I helped review those things too. So there's 
migrating like Xamarin Essentials code and migrating Xamarin Forms apps, all sorts of stuff. So there's a whole Xamarin Essentials migration guide, which is kind of cool. So um, really fascinating. I think that's really good. Definitely check those out in the docs. And that's what I got. All right. Great. Yeah, you mentioned, James, that they're, I'm going to back up, back it up just a bit. In Visual Studio, I think 17.6 preview, there's the visual editor for Android manifest files. I think that's new, which is cool. Yeah. Um, instead of having to go in and modify that XML by yourself and mess it up by yourself, you can now have a visual editor that lets you do it and make it sure it's great. And we talked all about those workload files. And .NET 8, there is now .NET clean workload to get rid of yes. all those ones that just happen to maybe stick around and uh, are messing up your system. And I know, James, you hang out on the preview channels all the time, so I imagine something might be sticking around. Now you can get rid of them. Super easy with this CLI, .NET clean workload. Or it might be .NET workload clean. Either way, Yeah, .NET it'll, it'll throw an error, yeah. and you'll get it right by using those yeah, three exactly. words. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's really neat, too. But um, back to the videos. We're doing a really cool thing. It just started yesterday. Going on today, tomorrow, it's going to happen seven more times then, is that we're doing a Let's Learn.net dash Azure series all over the world. And what I mean by all over the world, in eight different languages and eight different time zones. So James, David, let's say, David, you lived in France and James, you were in Japan. We will have a Let's Learn Azure specifically for you in your time zone and in your language. So we're not going to just have a U.S. space, English, and Pacific time. No. You're in Japan. It's going to be in Japan, a time zone that's comfortable for you, and in Japanese, Korean, um, French, uh, Portuguese, Brazil, Spanish for Latin America, all over. We have an Africa-based one. We have, I'm not going to remember, China, India. We're, we're all over the place. So that's super cool, and I'm really excited. That started rolling out last night, U.S. Pacific time, or daytime in Japan. Um, we just did one in the U.S. today. And then Korea is tonight, U.S. time or daytime today. Actually, daytime tomorrow, Korea. And that time zone, that time zone line always hurts. Yeah. Daytime line always gets me. But yeah, we have a blog post on it that outlines when everything is. And it's yeah, really neat. So go on through early May, early mid-May when everybody's going to go through. So, and of course, they will all be recorded and available on the uh, .NET YouTube too. So, if you miss them, you can always just jump in and and see. So, it's really cool. We're talking about the beginners of Azure, so we'll talk about cloud computing, what it is, and then get into uh, deploying a .NET app to Azure too. So, yeah, really neat. We'll see how it goes. And ideally, we'd like to do this all the time because I think that's we, the reception so far has been really good. That's awesome. Yeah, we've done Let's Learn as well. If you go to the playlist. And all sorts of stuff. We've done modernization, Blazor hybrid. We did a .NET Maui one, uh, data, Visual Studio, Git and GitHub. I mean, there's are sort of the basic building blocks. It's really, you know, great to see, it's, you know, mm -hmm. it's live interactive. So you can ask questions. And I love that it's, uh, you know, in your time zone, in your language. That's really cool. And I hope to see yeah. more and more of this. So we're definitely experimenting more. There's a on.net uh, Korean edition, actually, Justin, uh, who's going to be doing the Let's Learn. Uh, yep. Azure event has some videos, including, I think, with some uh, members of the Tizen. Tizen team. Yeah. So which yeah. is really cool. So definitely check those out, too. I mean, if you speak Korean. Well, he, so, he has it subtitled. Uh, it's subtitled. I absolutely yeah. Love, yeah, they they do a good job subtitling it, too. I love this because I've been learning Korean since since lockdown, since oh, wow. early 2020. And so what is cool for me is when I get to watch like the Tizen guys or or Justin or anybody um, not only do I recognize some of the Korean words, but all of the English, <laughs> because they're speaking about software development, I recognize all those words too. So I feel like my, you know, 25% vocabulary got bumped up to like 50%. And uh, it's, it's a blast. So I get to mix my language learning with the actual, you know, tech content that I enjoy and that I know something about. So, hey, if you're a language learner also, which there are a lot of us in the software development community, find the content in the target language you want to learn and go watch some, go watch some .NET stuff. Yeah, that's cool. It's a good idea. I like it. Yeah. Never thought about it that way, David, but you're right on. And it's all, you will have the Azure, you have Microsoft.net. That's 
that's the same across any language. Exactly. So, yep. <laughs> really cool. And uh, just a quick couple tidbits about build. Um, we alluded to it before, but if you're there, there's going to be a, like an Ask the Experts area where we will have 17 .NET experts at all times manning the booth, so to speak, during the daytime. James, you'll be there. David, you'll be there. .NET Maui product team will be there. Maddie, Beth. Everybody uh, will be there. Becky. Becky. Yep. So it's going to be, it's going to be wild. It's going to be a lot of fun across everything. Maui, Blazor, um, minimal APIs, ML, AI. We'll be talking about it all. So if you're there, join in, have fun. If you're not there, send me some questions. I'll ask them for you and we'll get the answers. Nice. So yeah. And what else are we going to talk about? Oh, some other news. Luis is doing a whole thing on AI too. He has how many blog posts now, James? Like three or four now. Or I think so, yeah. He's you know, on, he has some in the pipeline. Yeah, he's planning on doing some like every, almost every other week or every three weeks or so on, yeah, .NET plus OpenAI. Yeah, so that's, that's super cool. And we're going to be doing a learn path on that too, um, hopefully by build. Now I'm saying it in public, so we'll have to actually get it done by then now. <laughs> but it'll be based off Luis's, uh, our um, PM for oh, AI in cool. .NET. And so we're, collaborating with him to get it done. So somebody who knows what they're doing and Kinfei is helping out too with that. He's a, a cloud advocate who knows a ton about ML and AI. So yeah, can look forward to that around late May time too. Nice. Yeah. I think the last one is that uh, we had a great guest blog post actually by Vladislav himself, who we talked about earlier um, on the new updates to the .NET uh, Maui community toolkit, some file and folder dialogues built right in there, which is really cool. He showed off that and how to, to update it um, and how to take advantage of it and, you know, drag in and drop in and open files and, you know, really making it full fledged, which is a really, really nice thing to see. And, uh, you know, file and folder pickles, pickers, their heart and soul of it. So it's, it's cool to see that. And, and at the same time, you know, definitely check out the community toolkit stuff. There's a new release of the .NET community toolkit 8.2. There's faster generators, code fixers, performance improvements, all sorts of different stuff in there. Uh, especially if you're working uh, with um, you know commands and MVVM, tons of stuff going on there. So definitely check that stuff out, which is really, 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 really neat. Mm -hmm. So just a couple quick tidbits of some Azure news. Um, Azure Data API Builder which we lovingly refer to as DAB, has now become a public preview. And this actually is a really cool service. So if you're using data in your .NET MAUI app, which I'm sure a lot of people are, and it's like in, let's say, Azure SQL or some other database, you can actually put this data API builder in front of it, wrap your data with it, and now you can get at it. You, uh, you can expose that data via REST services or GraphQL. Mm. So it's like a wrapper service that you can pop your data around and then you can start getting at it and you can secure it. You can add um, security around it, like both easy auth. Uh, we all love, know and love easy auth from app service, or you can do more uh, in-depth security like with uh, Azure AD and so on. So it's an easy way to expose some GraphQL around some data that you already have and uh, public preview. So go check it out. I'll put the link in the show notes for it. And another cool thing going along with the data theme is passwordless connections. You know, the only secure password is the one that you don't know. And so we started having a bunch of uh, documentation starting to come online for accessing Azure data, whether it's Azure SQL or Azure MySQL or what's the other Postgres SQL without using a password using Azure um, or not Azure .NET SDKs to get at them. So that's really cool to just um, manage identities. We'll have a, all the documentation, but essentially no more connection strings. You just Whoa. need to know how to, where it, where it exists in your IP, essentially IP address. So no more passwords, which is the only secure way to do it. That's true. And, yeah. So which actually takes my, in my uh, demos, my password is always ABCD1234 dollar sign or exclamation point. And uh, now I can't even use that anymore. So, but life moves on. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of the authenticator app. Like, because like uh, 
I the Microsoft Authenticator, because when you log in with your MSA, Microsoft account, that it'll just send you a notification. You can just approve it like, oh, don't enter your password. Just do this. And that's one of my favorite features in general. And I'm very excited. One thing that's always scared me about two factor authentication, just talking about passwords, is two factor authentication apps that um, don't cloud sync your key backups. Like that's always like terrifying because if you lose your phone, basically you can't get into any accounts. And I have, if I just type in auth on my phone, uh, in my, on my iPhones, and I type in auth, I literally have three authenticator apps. I have the Google Authenticator, Microsoft Authenticator, and the Battle.net Authenticator. Um, because why not? You got you to gotta play StarCraft from time to time. So I have all these auth apps, and the Microsoft one always synced, but the Google one did not sync on iPhone. It does on Android, but didn't, but they just updated it. It's the one that I use for like all my you know, the scanning of the stuff. I don't use Authy, but it has all of it. So now it's cloud synced to my Google account. So I'm very happy. All my authenticator apps are all cloud syncing. It makes me very happy in case I happen to, you know, be in a helicopter and I throw my phone out. <laughs> Which you've been known to do. Uh, it's from time it's to time. What I've, yeah. yeah, I was happy to see that too. And what I've started doing before is one password has that now too, where they can, mm. you can put into your passwords, the one time password or, you know, the, the expiring ones. So that's cool. That oh, nice. Automatically syncs and kind of travels around with you too. So yeah, now I have Google auth, authenticator and one password with the same ticking passwords in it, but <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I just like that. They're all just in my in my phone. They're all just named authenticator. And that's it. Just <laughs> that's it. It's all you get. It's an authenticator. Uh, pick the pod. What do you got? Pick the pod service of the month. Pick of the pick of the service of the month. Pick of the service of the month. I'm going to say Azure Microsoft DevBox. And the reason I say this is that we're putting together a workshop for build for reliable web apps. Nish, cool. Neil, am I? Nish used to be a Xamarin advocate way back in the day mm -hmm. and now he's doing just a ton of cloud native stuff and we're putting together a workshop on cloud native and reliable web apps and you know how when you do a workshop one of the toughest things of the workshop is making sure everybody is up to date and can um, install software computers laptops getting everybody together is the toughest thing microsoft devbox solves that not only for workshops but also like in your job you, essentially it's like this vm that's supercharged and made just for development. So you can preload all your development tools on there. You can preload um, code on there and you just spin it up and you can set it to auto shutdown at night. So it's like VM plus plus or VM sharp, so to speak. So yeah, and so we're gonna have just a ton of that set up for, for our workshop, but you can set it up um, for your day-to-day -day job too. And your admins from IT can take charge of it too. So you know how they like to, uh, have a say in stuff well they can have a say in things now and uh you can access it through a web browser or through uh, remote desktop apps and yeah so super cool that's my pick of the pod yeah i think you can configure it like in your github repo i think too right is that a thing i think so yeah yeah i think you're right i haven't tried that but yeah i think you can yeah get a provisioning essentially a infrastructure as code or something like that yeah because there's know, also some... dev containers which you can do which is different yeah. But, yeah. Dev containers are also super cool. Like when you think about it, it's like, okay, like, Hey, I want to, you know, set up my Azure stuff. I have these bicep files, these arm files, like here's the, here's how I deploy it. Or right? dev containers, like I'm doing local development. Well, how do you define and define your dev box that's in the cloud? Right? Well, it's not a container. It's, it's a full machine. So you can configure mm -hmm. all the software on it as well, which is really cool. Um, yep. it's a good one. Oh, my pick of the pot is Microsoft Build. You should register build.microsoft.com. <laughs> what do you got, Dave? Uh, I wanted to give a shout out to uh, Jonathan Dick, Reth, and uh, he has shipped yet another uh, very useful command line tool. This one is appledev.tools. So it's a .NET uh, tool from the command line, and it helps you to list simulators, boot them up, shut them down, reset them. Uh, also does some keychain stuff for importing your certs, does provisioning profiles. You can download and install them. You can even create certificates. 
all from the command line. So all the Apple ecosystem stuff, um, you have this nice little tool now. And uh, it also integrates and works with GitHub Actions, apparently. So there's a whole GitHub Actions thing that he did. And this pairs nicely with a uh, command line tool that he's had for quite a while for Android. So from both sides. And on the Android side, you can uh, manage your SDKs, you can create and manage your emulators, start them up, shut them down, all that sort of stuff. Um, so if you want to live that command line lifestyle, you uh, you want these tools. Uh, they're very, very useful. And you can check out the GitHub Actions too. So thank you, Mr. Jonathan Dick. Leader. Of everything, basically, that you need for, for, for stuff. Talking about Jonathan Dick, I just did a blog right now as we spoke. I wrote it as, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I, I was on my main machine, and Matt will know this, our main machines are Windows ARM devices. We, uh, Windows Dev thing, Dev Kit, Windows Dev yep. Kit 2023 mm -hmm. Project Volterra. That's my main, my main driver. So I, I'm Windows ARM all day my M1 MacBook Air all day. And one of the things that is kind of a bummer town on the Windows is that there's no Android emulator that's compatible. Right. And um, I'm sure you saw our group chat, David, the other day where I was like, hey, does this work? And Mr. Peppers and Mr. John Dick, the Johns, were like, nope. And there's no plans apparently from Google to optimize that puppy. So I said, hey, let me do a blog on how to do it. Like, obviously, you just deploy it to a device, but good old Windows subsystem for Android. I always forget it's there. Boom, it's there, and it works great. So, um, and John Dick has a great extension in Visual Studio called the Barista. Um, that's a deep cut, um, <laughs> really. But uh, you can install that onto your ARM64 device, Visual Studio, and it'll automatically boot up the subsystem, connect to the ADB, all that stuff, and it shows up right in Visual Studio. We did a whole we did a whole video a year ago on the .NET mm -hmm. YouTube about it. A whole year mm -hmm. ago, more people need to about know about it if you're on ARM device, but or if you're even not on ARM device, you can use it on any Windows 11 device yeah. with WSA deployed just locally. Boom. Yeah, and it's been coming out to more and more countries because it is kind of a regulated thing. It depends upon the Amazon store. Yeah. Um, for an for Android, so. Um, I've noticed that it's coming to more and more because I was doing a presentation in, oh, was it Sweden or Netherlands? I can't remember. And I was like, y'all should be using this. And then I went and looked at the regulations. It's like, oh, it's not available in their country. That's Just why they'd never did. heard of it. <laughs> yep. But uh, it is now. So check it out. There you go. All right. We did it. That was a long podcast. Well, I'm excited. It's been a while. It's been a hot, hot second, but I'm excited to see both of you at Microsoft Build. And I hope I see everybody at Microsoft Build. Wow, I'm really all in one. It's like I work for Scott Hanselman. Scott Hanselman is like, build, 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 build. And he's really rubbing off on me. Like, build, 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 build. So <laughs> I haven't been to Build in a while because there hasn't been one in person. Hasn't so, been in a while. None of us have. Yeah. But it's going to be going. very exciting to get back in person with everybody. So looking forward to it. Well, that is going to be it, I think. If you want more .NET and .NET Maui content, check out the .NET blog. Check out Donet on Twitter, on Mastodon, on YouTube. Also, check out weare.net, .io, .io, .io. This is a really cool website. Um, I'm on it. I don't know if you guys are on it, but uh, a few of the community members, Matthias and Tim, have been working on this puppy. It's really cool. It has a bunch of content creators. You can, if you're creating content, blogs, podcasts, YouTube videos, uh, you can get an RSS feed of all that stuff. You can browse by category, filter. You can look at communities that are out there, such as user groups, um, different uh, sub uh, categories. Like there's a Planet Xamarin feed, there's a Women.net feed, and you can go in. You can see all this stuff. You can add it to your watch later list. All this other stuff, like really, really cool. It's all .NET stuff. Live streams, blogs, you name it. Podcasts. And I've been chatting with them. They got a Discord. Come hang out. It's fun. Pick the pod. Boom. That's gonna do it for this months by month whatever it is uh down in my podcast so until next time thanks for listening